All right, so yet he cannot compel his son to turn to him and remain himself. We're on text 298, paragraph seven for those online. So in other words, it's saying we can have that little willingness or that so little turn to him, but he can't make us do that. It has to come from us because of the way the universal laws are set up that we have free will. And so it can only happen with our choice or our will to join with him and find out what his answer is instead of what our answer is. So as he says, yet he cannot compel his son to turn to him and remain himself because in order for God to do that, he would have to be within the illusion and God is not part of the illusion. God is in oneness um, and doesn't, you know, as the Course says, doesn't even know about the separated state. But he sends that helper, what the Course talks about is the Holy Spirit, and that's our uh, segue between the two. But we're not going to um, change him, because if we could, we probably would have, which would have been a really bad thing, because then we would never find our way out. All right. As being yours, he cannot change himself for your identity is changeless. So it's a little confusing. What do you mean it's changeless if I believe I've changed? Okay, I mean, let's face it. We're, we're not in a state of changelessness. We are in a, in a state that believes a great deal of change. And why he is <coughs> speaking it that way is because, as we all know, he calls this a dream. We didn't really change the truth of who and what we are. We have simply changed the belief system that we are aligned with, but that's not real. And throughout the course, Jesus will often say, it appears that there are two choices, the ego and the Holy Spirit. But then oftentimes he will go on and say, but only one is true. So while we're in the separated state, there is obviously the experience of two choices, but in truth, there's only one choice because the second one is just a dream. The miracle acknowledges his changelessness by seeing his son as he always was, not as he would make himself. So if you think about the whole idea of asking to see any situation you're struggling with through his eyes, what he wants to show you is in truth, you're changeless. He's not looking at this of let's fix the world and make it better so Marianne will be happier. It's about recognizing the truth of who I really am, which of, of course is a real challenge because the facts are we don't really want that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a real dilemma. In fact, I know Jason asked the question last week. So this really means I don't really want what the Course says. And, 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 and I answered in an ultimate sense, that is correct. And at the same time, we literally have to begin where we are. We have to acknowledge where we are and we have to work from where we are, slowly stepping backwards to acknowledging, accepting and living only the truth. And that's not where we are right now. Jesus is very clear about that. He makes it very clear throughout the course as he gently nudges us in that direction. You know, I get that you're here and I'm telling you about there, you know, like there. And um, we're going to, you know, take small steps and keep working with this until it really dawns on you that the value of the complete aspect of guiltlessness, changelessness, and your true self is really what you want and only what you want. So this is never about judging or attacking yourself when you recognize I'm not in that state where the truth is I really don't want just peace or I don't just want to know what truth is. But it is also a realization that you can no longer blame God for not letting you in heaven yet or not blame your brothers because they won't do what you think they should do. But it's a recognition that this, you know, all the um, 
control literally is in my hands and it's no longer something I can point a finger at. But again, don't add guilt to that because this is not about feeling guilty about becoming aware where you are. It's about becoming aware where you are so that you can keep working on understanding that changelessness and guiltlessness is really of great value. And all the things I normally am chasing after really are never going to take me to that place of total healing. The miracle brings the effects that only guiltlessness can bring and thus establishes the fact that guiltlessness must be. And I think it's really important for us to grasp the concept of the world word guilt. And from, you know, the worldly sense, guilt would be, you know, I made a mistake at work and the boss is reprimanding me. And so I feel guilty. Okay. That's what guilt in the world is. But literally from the perspective of the course, guilt was the effect of the choice for separation. So being here in, in the separated state, in this dream, believing this is who I am, is guilt. We wear our guilt. We, wear our guilt. we live, it, it curses our veins. We, the only way we can remove ourselves from the guilt is to make the other choice. And, you know, the concept, one problem, one solution. The problem is, I believe I separated. The answer is you didn't separate. It's not, you know, what do I do different at work so that my boss won't hate me or fire me? It, which is, you know, so it's just the normal way we live and breathe and operate in the world because that's just the way it's been set up. But, and, and, you know, I often say, continue to do whatever you do in the world, but don't forget to ask for help. Because as he said in that first line that we talked about, you cannot be the guide to miracles, for it is you who made them necessary. And so grasping the idea that having chosen for the ego brought all of this, you know, the umbrella of the whole, everything is encompassed in that. And that's not your true home. Yeah. The idea that you should have known better, I oh. guess, in your job. Yeah, you know, there's something you should have known better than this. Well, you're yep. you do better than this. That's a kind of comment you would get. Absolutely. You, know, you know better than this. Well, you don't know anything. And, yes. And you yep. can't know anything unless you and yes. that everything you ask to come in and replace what's going on with more stuff and more ideas than that. None of it sticks as a thing that works. Right. And that's the very concept that Jesus is desperately trying to get us to understand is nothing in this world is ever going to fulfill what we're really looking for. Nothing. And yes, it's it's so it's so tricky because if I do make changes in the world, it can appear for a time that things are better. So it's very manipulative. Well, but it's got my individuality. Well, and that's, that's yeah. always well, having the cake and eating it too is way huge of the one for, so for the ego. Yeah. Yeah. And this this is really saying if you're doing it on your own, you're going that way. <laughs> you're going the wrong direction. And that's not 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 wrong in the respect of bad, but wrong in the respect that if you want only peace, it's not going to ever bring you peace. That's right. Yeah. And that's where the question, when you have a question for peace, how do I how do I get out of this situation? How is this ever going to be okay? That's a, that's an uh, like a pivotal question sure. for how you accept something beyond some little thing somebody says, and yet yes. how you recognize God immediately in that answer is yeah. is a miracle. How you go, oh, that's it. Yeah. And I remember being, you know, before I came to the course, being very desperate in one situation and really wanting to know what's God's plan. What is your, how can this be right? You know, everybody's, um, well, my brothers were in the hospital while they both passed away. They had a disease that, you know, they, that they was genetic and they both passed away. When the second brother was in the hospital, I was just beside myself. I said, how did my mother have to go through this again? The next brother, he's in intensive care. And I sat there in the 
units and other families were in there. And there was a woman in there who had lost her grandchild and almost lost her daughter-in-law. Well, you hear the stories, you're sitting there for an hour or so. And the other family, you know, I said, I, um, I just don't get how this is gonna be okay. This is not gonna be okay. And one of the families uh, said, um, oh, they said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll we're paying for you that God will, you know, that will fix be it. Okay. Right. He'll be okay. And I said, you don't get it. He's not going to be okay. He's not going to be okay. He's going to die. And that's what's happening. And that's what's making me nuts. And then as I was sitting there in my pain and whatever, wait, and just thinking, okay, this is how is it? All moon. That was a miracle. Nope. You know, like, like think in your in your shallowness or wherever you feel your like somebody's let you down. You sit there long enough and cry out, and then eventually, yep. you know, the well, then comes through. That's basically the little willingness that he's really talking I mean, about. It was yep. really the, the big desperateness, maybe. Little well, little yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> saying, how can this can't be right? How how is this true? How can how can this be right? Yeah. And it wasn't that it was right. It was just that's how it is. And that's what the body is, doesn't mean anything. It's all about the spirit, yep. it's all about all that. So yep. um, that would be when it, when it presents itself like that. There's no, I was asking the question the whole time in the middle, in the bottom of my heart, asking and pleading, and how can this be right? And, and I was told, just, we're going to give you to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. Well, that? yeah. And, you know, I in my experience, I have found, I can ask for help. And then there's times where you ask for help. You know? yeah. And it's like, there's nothing left of you. And when you ask from those moments, those are usually the ones that bring forth the, the most connection because we have totally you know, put down our arms. We put down my concept yeah. of what it could possibly be. And we are coming totally with open open hands and arms and i guess it never it didn't occur to me that you can usually live live from that right but then yeah this well this yes yeah living from that space where i don't know <laughs> and I, it's not up to me and i didn't do it yep all right we are going to oh i'm sorry was there somebody had something else oh yes it's a, yes beautiful thank you okay so we're going to turn to text 352 paragraph five Don't have it. Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, and then we're going to be in paragraph five. five. Yeah. Thank you, Miriam. Yeah. I think you did. <laughs> And once again, this is going to be telling us about this idea of us not doing this, not bringing the truth to, what is it, bringing the truth to illusion. Yeah, that's right. Instead of the episode. Yeah. All right. So paragraph five. Think you can bring truth to fantasy and learn what truth means from the perspective of illusions? Truth. But it's but it's three fifty two paragraph five, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. I think so. <laughs> All right. Think you can bring truth to fantasy and learn what truth means from the perspective of illusions. Truth has no meaning in illusions. The frame of reference for its meaning must be itself. When you try to bring truth to illusions, you are trying to make illusions real and keep them by justifying your belief in them. But to give illusions to truth is to enable truth to teach that the illusions are unreal and thus enable you to escape from them. Reserve 
not one idea, or excuse me, yeah, one idea aside from truth, or you establish orders of reality that must imprison you. There is no order in reality because everything there is true. What a delicious, juicy little paragraph that is, right? So think you can bring truth to fantasy and learn what truth means from the perspective of illusions. And so we'll just do this little chart here. You know, we think we're going to bring truth to illusion and make illusion better. That's, I mean, that's, let's face it. That's really what we want, you know. But that's a fishbowl. That's a fishbowl. Yeah. And it's a fishbowl made of a lie. Right. And nothing of truth can ever enter the, the lie and vice versa, because these are two mutually exclusive experiences and nowhere can one touch the other. And not to judge, but there are many spiritualities or new agey things out there that constantly want to bring the truth to the illusion, make the illusion just a little bit better so I can tolerate the illusion a little bit more. And my guess is probably everybody in this room played and dabbled in that probably for a really long time. I sure know that I did. Um, and I think that ultimately what that takes us to is the realization of I did all those things I was told and trained to do, but I'm still not at peace. There's something still missing here. And as we begin to become aware that, you know, there's something wrong, you know, it's right back to the Helen and Bill's first comment. There's There's got to be another way. And when you've exhausted all the possibilities of the other ways of the world, even in your quest for spirituality, you finally come and throw up your hands and go, wait, I don't, I don't know, which is exactly where Jesus wants us. Well, truth and illusion can't coexist. Absolutely cannot. But many people try to combine them very frequently. Yeah. But this course, I think the, the most unequivocal aspect of the course is it doesn't combine these at all. These are two completely, absolutely different things. Yeah. We are turning it over to the Holy Spirit all the time for the purpose of, of um, healing separation. Then, and you start to see the Holy Spirit in everything, everybody around you, then it can become happy dream and then absolutely, absolutely. yes so you kind of need that stuff. right but that but that's much far yeah <laughs> as far as exactly along our journey right yeah well it's interesting when you when you're trying to do things according to if you keep visualizing or thinking this is what i want you keep writing about everybody you want and stuff like that it's so much work and you think it's really going <laughs> to work that far. Yeah. And sometimes it seems to, where there's some attitude you have around it, where if, you, if you're not totally enmeshed in it, but you know, all that work to visualize that person, their color, their hair, the color, I mean, you go into <laughs> all this stuff. This is part of the, of how you work that kind of idea. You know, whatever you think about, like they say, God's held in mind, create their own, after their own kind. But um, as a solution to happiness, it's uh, quite um, devastating when you've done all that work and you that yep. doesn't work. <laughs> well, not only that, but you can make a list of, let's say you're looking for a, a you know, a partner. I have a friend that made a list of, it must have been 200 things. She never thought to put on there, he had a job. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like no matter how much we try to make the picture you know and I'm not saying don't do those things because we all have dabbled and will dabble in, in whatever it is that turns us on or makes us you know pulls us over there but the as you keep fizzling out all those possibilities and, and we talked somebody mentioned the song or prayer at the beginning the song of prayer leads us through the sequence of, you know, you pray for the orange, you know, the red truck when you're a little kid, and then you keep going and going, and going. And the ultimate prayer is show me who I am. And when you pray from there, the rest of it gets taken care of. I don't have to dig through the specifics of it because I know who I am and the rest comes from the, I'm the lighthouse of love and the rest gets taken care of. But that's not where we are. So we begin with, with what's going on. I think that uh, to clarify about that because what about my blue car, hmm. you know, that I really wasn't attached to, I don't know what it was, but I wasn't writing it down all the things I wanted in a car. Mostly I needed a car for transportation and I wanted it to be a certain size. 
Right. And it was blue. I didn't really go hunting for a car with all those qualities. And I guess that's a difference in how you get what you need. I don't know if, if, if it's what you need or why, but um, I just thought that I was kept trying to think about how it was different because I didn't really go hunting like that. There's but nothing no. wrong with saying what you want. No, exactly. Right. Yeah. But be honest with it. I mean, I, I can remember years ago we were. This was a long time ago. We were looking for a couch, and um, you know, I was very specific about what I wanted. And 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 I at one point and said, God, but but I really need a couch, which I really did. But the thing was, I wasn't just. I don't care what it looks like. I care what it looked like. So you need to go with that. With that's where you are at that time. Maybe another time, I would just say, give me a couch, and you know, bring whatever you got there. I don't know, but the bottom line is take yourself where you are, but be very aware you're tricking yourself if you think you don't care. Mm -hmm. So just be aware. And and the Buddhists say that wanting is the cause of suffering. Oh, absolutely. So it's okay to want, but am I attached to right. that one? Right. I'm right. just right. laying it out there without an exactly. expectation. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know I've told this story before where there were two um, monks that all they had was their little loincloth or whatever. And the, um, the only possession each of them had was a mat to sit on to meditate. And one of them stepped on the other one's mat and then there was a rumble. So you see, we can get rid of everything. We can say, I don't want anything, but the ego is still alive and well in us. And that's what we really need to address. All the rest of it is, you know, stuff for sure. But we need to get to the core, which is the belief I'm separated from God, because the rest of it is going to pile on top of that and appear that the problem is that when it's really the underlying belief system that we hold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So truth has no meaning in illusions, period. End of story. Truth has no What's the words? Truth has no um, meaning in illusion. Okay, so truth doesn't have a meaning here because it doesn't live here, just like this doesn't live here. And if I'm playing here, I'm not playing here. Did you have something, Yada? I'm sorry. I'll ask. I was trying to decide if I wanted to or not. Cat is there. It goes back to interpretation and intention. Sure. So, it, when something's upsetting me, I ask to see it differently. Mm -hmm. When spirit, please, you know, show me yep. as not changing. Right. The physicality is not changing the form of anything. Right. It's just changing my interpretation of what I see. Correct. So that's what you're talking about when you want to visualize. Yeah. Just choose to be happy with what you want. Well, that's what and the, that will that will increase. Generally. That's what the course has done for me. Before oh. that, before that, I always had to go through <laughs> my own thoughts first, even though I mean I would go through, I wouldn't know. I mean, I guess I did know who to ask in my <clears throat> dire straits, but mm -hmm. then but before that it wasn't like a normal thing to do, whereas now it's become more and more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It becomes a habit. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, there's nobody else to ask. There's nothing mm -hmm. else to do. Right. That's that's the thing that's helpful. Well, then Jesus basically says this is mind training. You know, so the more you reinforce it, the more it becomes who you are. All right. So once again, truth has no meaning in illusions. The frame of reference for its meaning must be itself. And just like the frame of reference of truth is this, the frame of reference for the separation or ego is this. But be very aware that this and this are very, very, very different. When you try to bring truth to illusions, you are trying to make illusions real and keep them by justifying your belief in them. Now, isn't that delightful? <laughs> and exactly what we're always doing. So I think it's it's almost as, as Beata was saying, you know, as we observe this, we become more in tune with this. As we keep checking in, we begin to realize a sentence like this, he's, he means that. You're trying to constantly justify the reason why you won't turn to the Holy Spirit. You know, 
It just is. And as, as Andrea was saying, you know, we, we will ask for certain points in our life, but we won't ask across the board. If it's, if it's something really, woo, but he's really saying, keep counting on me. <laughs> well, wait, you right. Exactly. It's, it's like Bill Shepard saying, there's got to be another way. And what the course tells me is, yeah, so as soon as you feel discontent, you know, I want to take it and say, I must have decided wrongly. Yes. All I have to do yeah. is recognize yeah. that there's another choice. Yeah. I don't have to know what it is. No. I, I don't have to do anything. But be aware. Bring it yeah. to Right. And I think as we keep working on this, the subtlety of my awareness yes. of I'm, you know, something's yeah. wrong here. <laughs> I better be starting to get my, my book out and ask here. <laughs> so let me read that once again. You are trying to make illusions real and keep them by justifying your belief in them. Okay. And, and once again, Jesus would not be telling us this to make you feel bad. He's bringing this to our awareness so that we can be aware when they come up this way so that maybe we'll start to shift that the other way a little bit more. But to give illusions to truth is to enable truth to teach that the illusions are unreal and thus enable you to escape from them. And again, I don't do this. The Holy Spirit does this when I ask, as Beata was saying, show me through your eyes what this means. And also be very aware that we're usually coming to the Holy Spirit because of an issue, a problem, a concern. He wants to give you everything. He doesn't want to just give you the answer to that one issue. He wants to show you what truth is. And we're going, yeah, could you just do a little bit of this over here? And he says, I got so much more for you guys. If you would just not come with all the specifics and just ask me what, what is what truth is. And then I will show you what that is. But the trick with that is then I don't often, I don't sometimes get my little trinket of issue uh, fulfilled. So I think nothing's happened. But literally every time you ask the question, show me what, what truth is, or show me through your eyes, whatever words you use, you're literally opening that door that is allowing you to become more aligned with what truth is and less and less aligned with what the ego is. And as we keep doing that, we start to just come from that place a little bit more frequently. Can I read my new Absolutely, of course. <laughs> Responsibility for sight, it's in that, <clears throat> in page 438. <laughs> this is the only thing that you need to do for vision, happiness, release from pain, and the complete escape from sin, all to be given you. Yeah. Blanket, say this only. But mean it with no reservations because here's the power, or here the power of salvation lies. Here we go. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. That's it. Don't you hate that? Yes. <laughs> and, you know, if you're, I am responsible for what I see, he is not, those aren't just nice words he's right. throwing he at us. It. He means it. And be very aware, it doesn't matter what the specific of the issue is. It could be very seemingly insignificant in the world, or it could be your house was bombed. It's all the same because you have a lack of peace. And if you really want that peace, you have to be willing to ask for him to show you what that is. Like we started again, you cannot be your guide to miracles, for it is you who made them. And it has to do with how I react to what I see. Absolutely. TV, or walking down the street, or what my body is doing. Yes, exactly. It's the constant yeah. judgments that we're always making. Yeah. You know? Yes, yep. correct. So constantly. constantly. Or putting ourselves into the future or the past and yes. doing guilt or regret or just dwelling it over if we could stay present 
Yes. And realizing that we're constantly judging and saying, yes, I don't want to be well, this man, inside and, and, I want to, and, yeah. I want to, I want joining and healing. Yeah. But all day, we have the opportunity to do that all day long. Right. right. <laughs> we just so hard to remember. Right. Yeah, yeah. but it's really the joining in your mind. But of course, yes. And I think so much of the course practice is getting us to develop the talent to be able to do that more and more frequently and not judge yourself when you forget and just, you know, okay, there we go again. All right. The course has got certain key areas that if you follow them, mm -hmm. you're on your way. But the problem is we don't follow them. Mm -hmm. We think we know the, the answer. <laughs> And we're always disappointed by what we think we want because we don't know what we really want. Well, we don't even know what we don't want. We're we're That's just not, totally. They, they're, we've got an agenda that comes out. Yes. Yeah. But that's very freeing. It's it like, is very freeing as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then he, you could read further. He says, "Merely acknowledge that you have been mistaken mm -hmm. in all yes. effects of yeah. your mistake." will disappear. Absolutely. Yes. And as Helene read, I mean, can you read just that part with the, the long list of stuff that it was going to be washed away? <laughs> you know, because really, it, again, if I'm asking for that one little trinket of something and, and he's promising we're washing it all away, do I really want to spend a lot of time on the little stuff? So this is the only thing that you need to do for vision, happiness, release from pain and the complete escape from sin all to be given yeah mean it truly yeah, mean it. like you said you say you want peace but I do, do you mean, mean it yep yep well and do i mean it above and beyond yeah. absolutely, absolutely everything else yeah i i want it yeah sure that's nice yeah <laughs> take yourself where you are too yeah, absolutely is, yeah you know, yeah a I'm keeper at. yep yes kathleen i mean that means absolutely nothing to me okay because well, what that does is my head flips into well all the crap that i give me is what i ask for and then it just it, 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 it then actually rolls me into confusion and if if i really got that i'd have a beautiful life and I have money and everything is beautiful. And so so in the past. So that's in the past. It's yeah. like my head flips with that. It gets no, yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty. That sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's like, okay, now mm -hmm. I'm mad. Yeah. Because look at my life. Mm -hmm. And I everything I am I'm responsible for everything I see and how what that's what I would say. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, it's like Balderdash. He's meaning in your interpretation. But it's kind of like I'm guessing it means just take a look at what's there mm -hmm. because everybody's responsible for what they see, mm -hmm. even if they have beauty and love, right? Which is just still part of the illusion. Absolutely. Or if you have disaster and craziness, yeah, it's still part of the illusion. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for everything I see. See, I think I was flipping it like. Taking it responsible. I got this. Life would be beautiful. And I wouldn't have all this stuff that's happened. And and I I don't think I got that until just now. Right. That it has nothing to because I used to flip yeah. right into feeling yeah. guilty. That's what the ego wants to do. Just can't get yeah. this right, can I? The guy has a bad life if I'm accepting I'm responsible. Well, and that's why I started out the very beginning of the class when we were talking about the first paragraph about guiltlessness. And I made the comment, choosing for the ego brought guilt. It's not because I didn't do this right, or I said that wrong, or why did I say this or do that or what go the wrong place. It's literally guilt. It's and I'm in my swimming pool. And realm. it is not because it's an entity outside of you that's trying to pull you back, mm -hmm. but because this is what we've ordered over and over and over. And as we read through the course, we're going to read it from here most of the time. And slowly you're going to start reading it from here because the level of guilt is going to start to decline and you're going to understand love more and more. Then you're going to realize there is nowhere in this book that Jesus. Jesus ever speaks anything but absolute pure love. 
but because I'm reading it through the lens of my wonderful ego, <laughs> I'm going to see it and hear it that way. And slowly it's like, oh my gosh, he's only always talking about love. And the ego is only talking about form and that's where the guilt is. Well, and that's where the guilt is. Even if you're a great manifester. Yay, exactly. Right. You're, still, you're still getting what you're asking for and that's not what he's talking about. That is not what he's talking about. Yes, yeah. yeah. Which is a revelation, you know, because mm -hmm. we can go through all those contortions. And if you look at, you know, people that were really successful at manifesting what they wanted, right. they may have more trouble getting back to this than those of us that didn't have as much success. I don't know. I'm not. You know, same that. problem with you guys. Right. And, no right. And the bottom line, again, with this course is, am I at peace? Or am I not at peace? That's that's what it's offering. You know, here's a way if you're not at peace, if you want to take it. And you're not going to and, solve it right. out in the world. Correct. And you're not going to solve it on top of that. Period. Yes. Right. And, and Kathleen. Nothing out here works. Correct. And Kathleen, why I always like to bring the story back to Jesus dying on the cross is because he used that as an example of I was called names, I was spit on, I was hung on a cross, you know, they did horrible things to me, but I remained in my center with love. So he was responsible for what he saw. He was responsible for what he saw, but it's not what happens, it's what you do if you remain in the centered part of the Holy Spirit instead of the ego, it doesn't matter what takes place in, on the outside, even to that extreme of a nature. Well, today's your day. <laughs> and that's what I love about the course is we can be trudging along and trudging along and you you know, you keep doing it. And then a light bulb comes on of something that's been said probably every week for who knows how many years. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, and that's what responsibility means according to the court. Right. Not that the responsibility means I've got all these things to do and all these things to take care of. And all, I mean, I get it. I mean, that's, you know, even the problem after is, the, the secret is you that feeling of you're doing it to yourself. Well, that's, and then that's the responsibility of your own happiness that you're you're not owning up to. You're pretending that you can go through the <laughs> bullshit and then go move on to some other stuff and it'll be better. And instead, you need to just take responsibility for each moment as it appears to you in your let life. Go of, let, just let go of better. Let go of good or bad. Right. right. You know? The secret is you don't know what anything is for. And what it's saying is I have the ability to respond. Right, differently. Right. And and it's tricky even with the I there, because it says I am responsible. If it if I'm reading that as Mary Ann, I'm taking it in as, oh boy, did I blow it by choosing this? Okay. It isn't even Mary, Mary Ann's the puppet that came as a result of this choice. And now I'm playing the puppet, and I'm not even aware I'm playing the puppet. So how could I be the one responsible? But what is responsible was this choice that we all as one son collectively made. So we're all in the same pot. You know, the, the Hitler, the worst person on the entire planet, I'm not saying Hitler is, but whoever, but it doesn't us. matter. He is, is, he is us and I is him because mm -hmm. we're all in the same pot and we can take, you know, nice people in the world and they're just as much in that pot as everybody else is. Because we made a mistake, Mother Teresa as well. Now she may she may be working on this from a different point of view as we are. So we're not as deeply ingrained in it as we used to be. But as a collective, originally that's the that's the pot that we all jumped into. So if I take it, I'm responsible as Mary Ann's this bad guy because she did so and so in the world, then that's just the ego going, oh yeah, this is really good juice here. We got it down flat here. You know? that's all, but that's, but that's the material, that's of, the material. of our work is that material of the ego yes. is what's going to come up to, right. to say, hey, it's me. And you go, well, no, I wouldn't like it to be you. Help right. me with this. Yes. Yeah. Because that's all yes. we're working with. Every little thing, you know, how somebody talks to you or how they don't talk to yes. you. Know, like yes. It's yep. interesting how that that's all mm -hmm. that's all we have to work with. 
Look at what triggers you. Just don't take anything in this world seriously. Well, that's yes. the ultimately it goal. Doesn't mean now anything. If right. something don't work out here, you, you do you do what you have to do, <laughs> but you don't take it seriously. No, it's a dream, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why take it seriously? Well, it's an effort to you yeah. know being raised that way. Fine. You can't you die. You can't, but you can't blame it on how you were raised. <laughs> you know differently like this minute i'm not blaming it on anything it's just how it's how i used to think for whatever reason and luckily i have a new thought now yeah we can give it a different purpose correct right. Different purpose. right and and that's the whole de deal is to give what the ego set up a different purpose and there now it's using that using all the things that the amazon sending to us at our doorstep and going wait a minute this is reminding me that I must have chosen wrongly and I can choose differently. And then so that that's just... Good, that's the good news about the ego. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's uh, <clears throat> sharpening us up for the Holy Spirit. Right. right. I didn't... Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So what did you say, Shelly? I'm sorry, I didn't catch up. More packages the better. From well, ultimately, that's correct. And my husband always teased and said, you need to send roses to those that really irritate the heart. Because yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. those are your gifts. They're your special gifts. Yeah. Yeah, you get the stuff from Amazon, you also get a bill. Nah. <laughs> well, we get a bill for making the wrong choice in the ego, too. <laughs> But the ego is not the enemy. No, the ego is not the enemy. It's the choice for the ego that's the enemy. The more we apply the course to what's going on in our daily lives, the closer the gap gets Absolutely. between the Holy Spirit and the ego. And oh, look, they're talking. They're playing nicely together. Yeah. And that's the happy dream. Yes. And you don't take it so seriously. Yeah. The ego like, like a baby. Yep. Yeah. 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 Just don't yeah. 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 Yep. But I was appreciating my ego. <laughs> very much aware that well, because when I was leaving my house, I pulled out the back door and I kept looking around and I was just overwhelmed with babies. Isn't that mm -hmm. it? It just it was so funny. I just had to stay there for several minutes. You know, the leaves are changing, that there are still flowers blooming. I know, isn't that wild? <laughs> I'm here. I love it. You know, the air, everything. Mm -hmm. How blessed I am mm -hmm. to be here, to be able to help this. Yep. And a week ago, walking out the door was probably a totally different experience. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, but that's how yeah. this works. It's like you, it the, could be the opposite, you know, like exactly. there too. Well, sure, right? Wednesday is supposed to snow. <laughs> Wednesday it's supposed to snow. All right, so, but to give illusions to truth is to enable to teach that the illusions are unreal and thus enable you to escape from them. So as we begin to turn them over, we begin to ask for help. He's going to show you that illusions are unreal and then open you to what the truth is. Reserve not one idea aside from truth, or you establish orders of reality that must imprison you. Um, so every time, every one idea that we hold on to is imprisoning us. Every one. There his, is, world is all in his, his world is not the same as ours. Yeah, yes. He shows us the truth. Is it the miracle? Correct. Well, I mean, literally, when you ask for healing, that's that's the miracle. The reflection of the miracle will be whatever shows up in your world that shows you something different. Yeah, I like I said, what the miracle is us asking. Well, yeah, yeah. that's really what it is. Yeah, yeah. And I I can see how we got it. 
to that. Yeah. Well, yeah, right. yeah. You lived your life thinking you knew everything. Exactly. Well, because I did. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> right. And I find that comforting because a lot of times we might say, well, gosh, I don't see miracles. So I'm right. not doing that. Well. Yes. But, I, but I like the idea of yes. I am, there are miracles going on. Correct. And and. Cool. Yeah. The says miracles are natural. Yeah. Right. And keep remembering, we've been going the wrong way for a really, 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 really long time. And the very fact that any one of us for a moment says, wait a minute. And even if we don't you know, physically mouth the words to help me to see this differently, but even if you're aware, something's not right here. We've already cracked the cosmic egg because before we just responded and there was no, no thinking, no nothing. We were just like robots. Bam, bam, bam. It's like 